Hi, this is Mark Baggett, and I'm going to show you some file hiding and process obfuscation. I know some of my friends are participating in a Capture the Flag competition, or I think this will benefit them, so I'll put this out there now. So here you can see I have a C colon backslash demo directory. You just saw it from the graphical user interface. Here you see it from the command line, and as you can see, it's currently empty. I just have the dot and the dot dot directory. Well, I'm going to create a new dot space directory in here using the syntax make dir backslash backslash question mark backslash c colon backslash demo backslash quote period space backslash dot dot space backslash quote and this creates a dot dot space directory nested within a dot space directory now I'm going to copy putty into this new directory that I just created now this this directory structure is pretty interesting in that it is very difficult to access from the command line and from the graphical user interface. Here you can see we have the dot space directory in here, but if I try and just cd dot space, well, that says cd to the current directory, so it's not really going anywhere. I can do cd dot space backslash dot dot space backslash, and that'll put me into this dot space directory. But getting into the dot dot that's beneath that now becomes very difficult. So changing into that directory, um, it's just not easy to do. Okay. So um, from the command line, it's very difficult to get into that directory. And you can see I'll try a couple more things here, trying to change directories, and none of these are working. Okay. All right, so here I am in this directory. If I do a dir slash s, you can see that putty still is here, and it's under the directory c colon backslash demo dot space dot dot space. I just can't get to it from the command line. From the graphical user interface, it's not any easier. You can see I've got my demo directory, and here's my dot space directory. I click on it, and it thinks it changed, but it didn't click on the dot directory again and now I can see that I'm in dot space dot space dot dot space when I try to go into the dot dot space directory Windows actually crashes with an error here and I'm unable to get into that dot dot space directory so I also can't get to putty.exe from the graphical user interface so I've got a directory that has an executable in it that you can't get to from the command line or from the graphical user interface well, that doesn't do me any good unless I can execute it, right? Actually, executing it through a symbolic link has a couple of effects. One, I can get to it. And two, I can obfuscate where it's actually running from. So here I'm going to use the make link command to create a symbolic link to putty in this nested directory structure. Now I can execute putty from this symbolic link. And you can see it runs just fine if I create the symbolic link and use it. Now I'm going to keep this running. Let's do WMIC and see where this reports this to be running from. So WMIC process where name equals putty.exe. Let's just do a list brief to see if it's running. And it is. Now let's do a list, de or list full and get the full details to see what path it's running from. And it says it's running from C colon backslash demo putty. So WMIC is going to report that this is running from the putty directory when in fact it's actually running from a nested subdirectory that you can't get to from the command line or from the graphical user interface. And the best part is we can now erase this symbolic link and putty continues to execute. So DEL, uh, let's try and spell it right, DEL putty.exe and putty is deleted. Right. So is my process still running even though my symbolic link is deleted? Let's check it. Yes, WMIC shows that the process is still running. Can I still interact with it? Yes, I can. So anybody who tries to look for this process that I've left behind will find it in a directory that or find it running from a place that doesn't exist.